Hello, everyone. My name is Anusha Singh. I go to Vestavia Hills High School, and today I'll be presenting on wound care disparities in developing countries. First, a little bit about myself. So I'm a rising senior at Vestavia Hills High School in Vestavia Hills, Alabama. It is my first year attending the Global Health Leaders Conference, and I'm super excited to meet new people and explore the field of global health. As for some of my extracurriculars, I'm a part of HOSA. I'm a chapter officer, and I've gone to the International Leadership Conference twice. I have done research on wound treatments and shadowed a cardiology researcher, and I'm an ISA finalist. I am the academic coordinator for my school Science Olympiad team. I'm a team leader at the McLean Science Center. I'm involved in cancer research awareness and fundraising through a nonprofit called To the Fullest Foundation and my school's RISE program. And I also shadow various medical professionals and volunteer at local hospitals. My passions lie in human biology and medicine, and I hope to pursue a career in emergency medicine or pediatrics with either a medical degree or a dual degree MD PhD. I'd also love to work for a charity organization such as Doctors Without Borders in the future. Now on to my presentation. So I will be presenting on wound care and management in developing countries and the disparities that these countries face. So the World Health Organization in March 2021 published a statement saying that across the world, injury death rates are higher in low-income countries than in high-income countries. These disparities in wound care account for a large proportion of diseases and deaths in developing countries. However, many of these effects can be prevented through changes in lifestyle, policy, access, research, and awareness in developing countries. First, let's start off with a brief discussion on two main types of wounds, acute wounds versus chronic wounds. Acute wounds are typically caused by an external traumatic event, such as a cut, a burn, or a surgical incision. They're usually characterized by a predictable healing process and heal within a reasonable time frame. They're less prone to complications compared to chronic wounds as long as they're managed and treated appropriately. And as for their healing process, they typically progress through a series of well-defined stages of wound healing, including hemostasis, which is blood clotting, inflammation, proliferation, and remodeling, which is maturation of new tissue. In contrast, chronic wounds are wounds that fail to proceed through the normal stages of healing in a timely manner, and they often persist for more than four weeks. They result from underlying medical conditions or intrinsic factors that impair the healing process. They're more prone to complications, including infection, tissue necrosis, which is tissue death, and the development of biofilms, and as a result, chronic wounds have an extended healing time and can present for months or even years without proper intervention. They require specialized wound care and management. This incorrect treatment is what makes chronic wounds so much more common in developing countries because they aren't able to seek proper treatment in the first place. And this causes a spiral effect because treating these chronic wounds becomes so much more inaccessible. So what are some of these complications that can cause an acute wound to turn into a chronic wound? These may include surgical complications, lifestyle factors, certain medications, underlying health conditions such as diabetes, infection, which is much more common in developing countries, pressure or shear forces, especially for elders, and poor circulation in the extremities of the body. What makes these complications so much more common in developing countries? is caused by disparities. These can include limited access to health care, inadequate resources due to maybe an imbalance in health system priorities or socioeconomic factors. It can include the burden of infectious disease. It can include a lack of sanitation and hygiene. It can even be non-communicable diseases or a lack of education and awareness. Now let's discuss some statistics between developing and developed countries. For infection rates, in a study published in a journal of wound care in 2016, it was reported that wound infection rates varied significantly between countries, with rates ranging from 2 to 25 percent in developing countries. In developed countries, due to better healthcare resources and infection control measures, the reported infectious rates were generally lower, ranging from 1 to 8 percent. As for wound healing time, a review published in the Journal of Clinical Medicine in 2020 found that wound healing times for similar wound types could be significantly longer in developing countries compared to developed countries. According to a study published by the Journal of Maternal, Fetal, and Neonatal Medicine in 2019, disparities in wound healing were observed in postpartum women, particularly in developing countries. The study found that wound complications, such as C-section wound infections, were more prevalent in low-resource settings compared to developed countries. Lastly, as for surgical wound infections, a systematic review published in PLOS Medicine in 2017 reported higher rates of surgical site infections in developing countries compared to developed countries. All of these different causes and all of these different statistics can lead to the exacerbation of an acute wound to a chronic wound. 
And as you can see here, the average cost to heal per chronic wound among patients treated in U.S. wound centers is approximately $3,927 per wound. This large cost of treatment of chronic wounds is one that people in many developing countries cannot afford, yet they are also unable to stop this progression from an acute to a chronic wound due to a lack of resources they face. Proposals and potential solutions. We can strengthen healthcare systems. We can increase access to education and training. We can also increase access to essential medical supplies in areas of low income. We can act on public health initiatives. We can participate in prevention and early intervention of wounds, which is critical in preventing the exacerbation of an acute wound to a chronic wound. We can also engage in collaboration and partnerships. We can empower communities and we can participate in research and innovation. Now I'll briefly present my research on herbal treatments. My research focused on the use of herbs, including turmeric, aloe vera, and poppy seeds to enhance the wound healing process in fruit flies. We found that these herbs all have positive effects on wound healing, as you can see in this graph. One key implication of herbal treatments is that these herbs are often easily and or cheaply found, and in developing countries, this accessibility is priceless. This is because often wound treatments that may be easily found in developed countries or accessible for the wealthy are out of reach for poor citizens of developing countries. More on herbal treatments. In addition to turmeric, poppy seeds, and aloe vera, herbs such as chamomile and calendula show promise as herbal treatments. However, it is important to note that while these herbal treatments can be beneficial as part of a daily diet or as an additional topical treatment, they are forms of alternative medicine and cannot replace orthodox treatment by medical professionals. Now, on to my conclusion. Wound care is a crucial aspect of global health as wounds, both acute and chronic, pose significant health burdens worldwide. Proper wound care is essential to prevent complications, promote healing, reduce disability, and improve overall health outcomes. Solving or at least reducing disparities in access to wound treatment are steps we must take to ensure a world of global health. Now, what can you do? You can support nonprofit organizations, actions such as volunteering or raising awareness. We can also participate in fundraising initiatives, we can share knowledge and resources, and also raise awareness through social media. We can advocate for policy changes in our local government and support local initiatives. Now here are some of my references and some acknowledgements to my parents, Ms. Busby, Coach Peterson, and Ms. Sutherland for the knowledge they've given me, the Global Health Leaders Conference and its wonderful staff, and you for listening. If you have any questions and comments, you can email me at this email or access my LinkedIn over here. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Mm.